Good afternoon, everybody. This is Jennifer Schaus, and we are coming to you live today from Washington, D.C. Thanks for joining us in our webinar series. And this is our procurement playbook series. It happens on Fridays at 12 o'clock. Uh, and the corresponding um, webinars come in on Wednesdays, which are the FAR uh, supplements. So these are panel discussions with federal government and industry leaders. Um, the Wednesdays, as I mentioned, are the FAR supplement. So on Wednesday of this past week, we covered uh, the FAR supplement on SOCOM. Uh, we want to bring your attention to a networking event that we're hosting at the end of the month. This is uh, Monday, March 28th over at the Kennedy Center. After a two-year, uh, we'll say, hiatus due to COVID, we are now uh, back in business with our networking events. Uh, we do have sponsorships available. There's a link there on the slide, and everybody will get a copy of the slides. So if you want to register for the events, you can click on that link, uh, or you can go to our website and navigate to the events tab, scroll down, and you'll find the event listed there in the registration link. Okay, um, we want to thank our sponsors. First and foremost is the Virginia PTAC. This is the Procurement Technical Assistance Center. They're housed uh, over at George Mason University in Fairfax. And they offer free one-on-one -on -one, uh, counseling to firms in Virginia on federal, state, and local procurement topics. Uh, online resources and group trainings are free with no restriction on business location. So if you're interested in learning more, use the links provided to explore uh, what the PTAC can offer. We also want to thank uh, the Federal Business Council. The FBC creates and manages virtual and in-person meetings and events to connect industry and government. The FBC works in the form of in-person and virtual conferences, training events, policy dialogue, and outreach. Over the last 40 plus years, the Federal Business Council has become a comprehensive resource for connecting industry and federal government. Uh, C3 is a full service IT provider uh, helping companies with CMMC, uh, DFARS, and NIST 800-171 compliance. For more information, you can either use the email address that you see there in the lower left-hand corner of your screen or the phone number that's listed there. Uh, and last but not least, uh, Destin is an IT and cloud solutions provider working with corporations, the military, and government agencies to lower their cost, increase scalability, uh, improve operational efficiency, and meet compliance regulations using targeted cloud-based solutions. Destin is a certified partner of Oracle NetSuite, the premier tier Google Cloud per partner, and a certified partner of Cisco, uh, Virtue, uh, AO Docs, and Authenticate. Uh, easy to use software um, provides functionality for the five most critical KPIs for GovCon, uh, built in backlog, pipeline, EAC. Uh, DISO and wrap rates. For more information about Dastin, you can contact Joe Alston. You've got his email address and, uh, and the website listed there on your screen. Okay, so today we are talking about uh, doing business with uh, U.S. Special Ops Command. And uh, first up, our panelists uh, we've got from FedMine, uh, recently acquired by GovSpend, is uh, Leela Salim. Leela, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Jennifer, for having us. Happy to be here. Great. And from the government side, we've got uh, Chris Harrington on the line. Chris, thanks so much for joining us today. Yes, ma'am. My pleasure. Thank you. Great. Okay. So first, we're going to start with uh, FedMine, and we're going to look at the business opportunities and outlook. I'm just going to navigate to the first uh, slide here for you, Leela, and just let me know whenever you're ready for the next one. Perfect. Thank you all so much. So FedMine is a federal business intelligence firm that's integrating from 18 federal data sites into one easy to use platform. This allows reporting and analysis not previously possible. Uh, we are now part of GovSpend, like Jennifer mentioned, the largest provider of data on the state, local and educational market. Next slide, please. The mission for US SOCOM, uh, provide fully capable special operations forces to defend the United States and its interests, synchronized planning of global operations against terrorist networks. 
Next slide. Okay, so looking at the data pertaining to SOCOM, they awarded 4.63 billion in contracts to 1,080 companies in fiscal 21. We can look at the various components of the DOD. US SOCOM was in the top five last year. The top companies that received contract awards were Lockheed and Boeing. Uh, next slide, please. I've linked that report in, in my slides as well. Of the top contracts awarded, the top NAICS codes that we found are professional services and logistics focused. With both of our top NAICS and PSC codes, they seem to have a focus also on aviation and engineering services. Next slide. In terms of small business contracts, 1.2 billion was awarded. Um, this was about 27% of all SOCOM contracts. We can have a look at the way these were made as set-asides, and then it's always really good to see where your company fits in with those and focus on uh, set-asides or sole source type of awards. Next slide. The top companies that were awarded as small businesses are Next Tech Solutions and iGov Technologies. The top NAICs are um, similar, but they are more services related. Uh, typically, these are found provided by small businesses. And then on the next slide, we're going to talk about the SBIRs and STTRs. 100 million was awarded to 74 companies utilizing these programs. SBIR and STTR enable small businesses to explore their technological potential and provide the incentive to profit from its commercialization. It's always great to see an agency utilizing these initiatives. Next. Okay, so now we can look at the categories. This is something that my colleague Archisha is always recommending looking at the categories and she says how it's sort of the future of government contracting. Um, looking at SOCOM's top categories, it's important to understand how the agency is buying, specifically in terms of small business and other than small. So you can see that um, IT is the, the top for both um, small and other than small, and then followed by that transportation and logistics services. Okay, next slide, we're gonna look at the top contract vehicles that are being used. We can use keywords and see how other contract vehicles are being used within your industry. We could drill into these to see who are the top contractors winning under these vehicles. Um, at SOCOM, Alliant and NASA Soup 5 are the top vehicles that were used in the last two uh, fiscal years. So always good to know how the government is awarding and what vehicles are being used and when is the next on-ramp or who are the top performers there so you could possibly partner with them. Okay, now we're going to look at subcontracting. So we get this data from USA Spending, and it's actually a really unique capability uh, found in FedMine. We make that connection from the prime contractor to the subcontractor at the task order level. So Lockheed is the by far and large the, the number one prime who's awarding the subs. Um, and you can sort of see on the right-hand side, I've given the top NAICS codes that these subcontracts were awarded under. 2.42 billion was awarded last year by SOCOM, um, by the 30 prime contractors and 420 subcontractors won that work. Okay, next slide. We're gonna start talking about looking at opportunities. So you want to, um, as you're planning the future, look at what opportunities are at that agency. These include new initiatives, looking at the agency's need and what they have funded, as well as reviewing their expiring contracts that will possibly be recompeted. How do we get this information? So we're gonna review the agency budget and program information. 
Obviously, you're going to want to look on SAM.gov for new pre solicitations and sources thought that they've put out for market research. Also, you definitely want to pay attention if there's any industry days, those are always great to attend and sort of start making connections there. And then, of course, the expiring contracts. So create searches that will alert you when contracts awarded in your capabilities are coming for expiration. So you can start to sort of have a runway there. Um, if they're going to be recompeted, have all your ducks in a row and be ready for that when it comes back out. Next slide, please. Expiring contracts. Um, I broke the data down by small business and other than small business. This first slide is looking at the other than small business contracts that are expiring. Um, in the next 12 months, there's 2.4 billion that were awarded as other than small. You can see the NAICS codes there. They're always generally this support services um, that seems to be the top one. Um, and then the next slide, you can see the top incumbents. One or let me see the next slide. Yeah, these are the top incumbents, and um, it's one strategy here is to really form relationships with these prime contractors for possible teaming and subcontracting opportunities. On the next slide, I put small business expiring contracts. Um, 708 million is expiring as small business over the next 12 months. Make sure to pay attention to the set asides that were used and also the top NAICS codes and industries. The results will change, obviously, if you use keywords for these searches to make it more refined to what you do. Next slide. The most successful companies are constantly tracking and looking at these types of um, information, uh, creating the relationships, really getting to know who are the key players on the vendor side as well as the agency side. On the agency side, get to know the contracting offices. If there's multiple contracting offices at the agency that you're targeting, learn how they are awarding, what vehicles are being used, and so on and so forth. And last, we're going to talk about the, the new, I mean, we're going to look at the new opportunities coming out of SAM.gov. You can easily um, save searches in FedMine or um, whatever tool it is that you're using or even um, SAM.gov directly and track the current pre-solicitations or sources sought that are coming out of SOCOM. Add these in FedMine to your pipeline and then prepare for when they become actual budget uh, procurements. So these are all the most recent ones out, uh, from the last three months. And then the last slide, I have linked the SOCOM budget information, and you can get more information there. And thank you so much for having me today, Jennifer, and feel free to email us if you have any questions. Great. Thanks. Thank you so much, uh, Leela. Always uh, good content from uh, from FedMine and GovSpend. Um, and the slides will be made available to anyone that registered or anyone that uh, has access to the internet. We will uh, list these on our slideshare.net site. We've got over 500 PowerPoints there and over 500 complimentary webinars on government contracting on our YouTube channel. Uh, now we're going to look at the inside perspective from the government. We've got Chris Harrington from the Small Business Office from uh, SOCOM. And uh, Chris, I'm just going to run through these first slides and I'll uh, hand it over to you. This first one basically just has the main link to the um, to SOCOM as well as a link to the small business office where you can get phone numbers and email addresses uh, for point of contacts um, within the uh, small business office. Uh, we did pull up the acquisition forecast uh, that's listed here for fiscal year uh, 21. Uh, and again, these will be made available. And then the links to the SBA scorecard for DOD. And Chris, uh, now we've got your slide up um, talking about, uh, I guess, events that you have coming up. So I will, uh, I'll will i be quiet and let you speak now. Sure, I appreciate that. And e excellent recap on the numbers. Um, very, very good. And I do appreciate that because that does give a good snapshot of kind of where we're at and what we're doing. Um, but let, let me fill in a couple of blanks on the uh, 
the dollars and percentages, and then we can talk about some other things that are, that are probably going to be important to you. Um, again, in fiscal year 21, we had uh, an outstanding year. That $1.2 billion awarded to small business was a new record for the command, uh, the most dollars ever awarded. So obviously that was a good, a good year in 21. Not only did we uh, set new record in small business, we also set a new record in small disadvantaged business on dollars, um, as well as percentage. In fact, we did 14.85% of all of our dollars went to small disadvantaged businesses. Um, uh, we did our second best ever in women owned at 7.91%. The best ever dollars awarded uh, to service disabled, we did 458 million to service disabled veteran owned small businesses. And of course, like most everybody else, hub zone's a little bit of a challenge for us. But if you look at the overall numbers from FY21, uh, we did outstanding. And uh, it's not a pat on my back or the small business office back. It's really a pat on the back for the organization because we truly do embrace uh, working with small businesses. Small businesses, because of our nature, are uh, very uh, valued partners. and. Uh, and they haven't let us down. I've been in this position 13 years, and uh, small businesses have done an outstanding job supporting us through all 13 of those years that I've been here. Uh, we can talk about the events, industry days that are coming. The first one there is the Special Operations Force Industry Conference coming in May. Uh, registration did open the 1st of March, and I put uh, the link there to register. Uh, Typically, uh, we get about 12 to 14,000 people at the Tampa Convention Center for this event. In the last two years, if you're a SOCOM person, if you've been following, we did the events uh, virtually. So this will be the first event in, in person since 2019. So we're excited about uh, having it in person at, at the Tampa Convention Center. One, uh, and I'm very technical, so one cool thing that we're doing at the uh, SOFIC conference is we will have a capabilities demonstration uh, with uh, foreign partners uh, out in the bay, if you're familiar with the Tampa Convention Center behind the Tampa Convention Center is, the, is part of Tampa Bay, and we do a, a number of uh, intra, in, in, uh, events uh, with the mayor out there. Uh, with uh, helicopters and boats and pyrotechnics and things like that. So it gives you an idea of kind of what we would do if we were trying to uh, rescue a hostage. So it's really pretty cool. Uh, if you've seen it before, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, the next thing that I had there was the small business roundtables that we do every other month. We were doing them uh, in person before COVID. Uh, after COVID hit, we started doing them virtually, and I suspect that we will continue to do them virtually because we're able to run through more companies on a, on a bi-monthly basis. Uh, when we were doing them in person, we were only getting 25 companies uh, and it was costly for small businesses. They'd have to fly in if they're not from the Tampa area, get a hotel and all those things. So what we've done is we transitioned to virtual. So the only cost is two hours of your time. The next event is on the 19th of April. And it is posted on SAM.gov. Now, when you, if you're going out and looking at that, it'll say that registration closed on the 11th of March. We try to get people to register early, but that's uh, okay if you still register. There's still space. Because it's virtual, we can take almost an unlimited number of companies. Typically, we get about 80 companies. And the way this event works is, is pretty interesting, and I think it's kind of unique in the DOD at least. Uh, the, the, the government, we have our acquisition executive, who is a two-star civilian equivalent. You have the director of contracts, who is an 05, or excuse me, 06 Air Force colonel. Uh, you have myself, my deputy, uh, the ESOP uh, lady, and then we also have our cyber uh, program manager at this event. It's a two-hour virtual event. We have about 15 minutes of prepared remarks. And then the next two hours are basically just questions and answers from small businesses because we want to hear directly from small businesses what challenges they're having, what are we doing well, where can we improve, 
maybe the Army or the Air Force are doing something better than us, so we want to hear about it so we can uh, uh, steal their good ideas. We don't have any problem doing that. But uh, we've been doing these events, <coughs> excuse me, for about five years. And truly, um, it, it's, it's been a good, good run, and uh, a lot of good information comes from that. And not only does good information going back and forth, some of the things that have been brought up in those meetings we have actually incorporated into our processes. So it's not a, it's not just a, you know, one time good deal. It's truly we take that feedback and we will change, uh, most of the contracting processes if and where it makes sense. Um, I do want to go to the next chart and now I really want to actually talk about some other stuff as well. Um, for SOCOM, we're a little bit different than most organizations. We're probably going to be a little bit more closed than other organizations just because of our mission and the size of our organization is quite small. So we I highly recommend that you reach out to uh, those links right there. Uh, that's our organizational mailbox, my mailbox, and Paul, my deputy. Um, most of the time, we will have the answers that you need, and if we don't, we will get them for you. Uh, we kind of frown on folks trying to contact the program managers or the contracting officers directly. And I know that's kind of counterintuitive because typically that's what you want to do. But in SOCOM, they are so busy, they've got so many actions, so many things that are happening that they will likely direct you immediately back to Paul or myself. So um, again, if you if you want information about SOCOM, talk to us first. And if we don't have the answer readily available, we will reach out to the program managers and contract officers and get that information. Um, so the number two there, inquiring participating opportunities, learn about, gov about the government, about SOCOM, which is like it was mentioned earlier, the, the uh, entry day at Sophic in May, the um, roundtables that we do every other month, those are good opportunities, special roundtable because it's free, um, to learn about SOCOM and understand kind of what we're doing and how we operate. Those events are not to allow small businesses to give us capability briefings. We do that uh, outside of the roundtable. So, in person, we just started meeting industry in person again about three weeks ago. So we do take meetings on Thursdays in person uh, here in Tampa. If that doesn't work for you, no problem. We will meet uh, virtually or a telephone call or what have you, uh, basically any day of the week. So Paul and I are available all week, uh, most weeks. And uh, whether you, if you can't come to Tampa or you're not local, we'll, we'll talk to you on the phone or do a uh, Teams. Teams works best for us. Um, the challenge with SOCOM, again, is some of our uh, firewalls don't allow some of the uh, different uh, platforms to work well. So Teams does work well. So if you want to talk to us, uh, show us documents or whatnot, give us demonstrations, uh, we can sort of do that on Teams. Uh, number three there, review and understand government requirements. Uh, we post out the Unclassified requirements on SAM.gov. Uh, the, the classified requirements are a little bit more challenging uh, because obviously we, we can't post them on SAM.gov. Uh, we are starting to use the ARC system, if you're familiar with that, or some of our classified requirements. Um, but if you if you think you need to or want to try to compete. Uh, for classified requirements, it's best to just contact myself or Paul. We can kind of tell you how we do that. It's not easy. Uh, just going to be honest with you there, obviously because of the nature of the business. Um, again, schedule meet and greets uh, with small business director and team, which is Paul. There's only two of us. And right there, as we talked uh, earlier. Um, and be prepared and be persistent. Uh, SOCOM. Like I said, it's kind of a, a unique organization, and you get one chance. So if you get a, a contract or subcontract and you perform well, it's like a snowball rolling downhill, and uh, you'll get more work. 
if you get in to SOCOM and you don't do well or you fail, it'll be like Siberia. We will never hear from you again. Uh, the mission is, is uh, so critical. People's lives are on the line every single day and night. They're running missions all over the world. So we can't have uh, such things performance. We've got to have the A game from everybody involved. Um, I, I did want to cover a couple other things. Then if, if there's time or there's an, a, a desire, we can open up for questions. Um, as was mentioned earlier, most of our small businesses on the prime side are going to be on the services. Uh, not a lot of products, although we do have some uh, small businesses providing products to us like sniper rifles and UAVs. But for the most part, you're going to find that most of the small business opportunities, dollars, and requirements are going to come through services. Uh, and I know that uh, they mentioned that IT is a, is a big one. So I wanted to cover IT really quickly. Uh, our IT program is like a three-legged stool. The first leg is IT hardware. And as you saw earlier, we're buying primarily on the United suit contract, about 60 to 80 million bucks a year, and almost every dollar there goes small. The second leg is uh, software and apps. And I know it showed that we were buying off a line of small business, but we have changed that we are buying primarily now off the Army's ICES 3S contract. Um, again, about 60 to 80 million a year, and those dollars are all going small. And then the final piece of the pie uh, on the IT side is what we call the OEM contract, the operations uh, maintenance contract. That's what the company called Jacobs Technologies. It's about a $1 billion contract. They're running out of Tampa. Uh, the Jacobs company does. It's about 1,200 FTEs spread out through all across the entire globe. Um, the interesting thing about that is if you're an IT company, we're getting ready to do the recompete on that. If you would like to, to, to uh, get the contact information for the incumbent, uh, Jacobs, I, I've got that information, and if you're interested, just send me an email. Uh, none of the other uh, primes have, have contacted me yet. Many times they will as we get closer and ask me to send them small businesses. So I'm not advocating for Jacob's understanding so far on this acquisition. Uh, the only large business that has come to me asking is uh, Jacob's. All right. Um, and then they also showed uh, the Lockheed Martin contract which is our largest contract. And you notice that they have a lot of subcontracting opportunities because in that contract, which is about a one, uh, excuse me, about a $9 billion contract, we put a clause in there that requires mandate, not a goal, it's a mandate, that they subcontract 35% of the CONUS dollars to small businesses. And they have to meet small business, uh, small disadvantaged business, service able, et cetera. Uh, we have mandates for them, again, not goals. And if they don't meet those mandates, then they are uh, in the contract, uh, a formula to take money away from them. So they are uh, they're obviously meeting those uh, small business subcontracting mandates. So again, if you are a, a logistics type company, uh, that's the contract. I do, of course, have all those points of contract for you if you're interested in that. Um, the other contract that was kind of uh, important that you saw on the earlier slide was the soft core support contract. It's education, training, and exercise support. It's a $975 million multiple award IDIQ, all small businesses. So that 975 is gonna end up being spread across. Uh, right now we have 46 small businesses times. Uh, but if that's, again, what you do, education, training, or exercise support, uh, again, feel free to send me an email. I've got all the primes and all the points of contact. Um, I'll go ahead and, and stop there and see if there's any questions that I, I might could answer. Great, thank you so much, uh, Leela, and thank you, Chris, uh, for your presentation. Just in the um, 
uh, interest of time, we typically don't take questions. So if anyone uh, that's on the program today has questions for uh, Leela or Chris, you've got their contact information here. Uh, please feel free to use it. Chris also provided uh, some links as well as uh, alternate uh, contacts within SOCOM. Um, so I want to thank everybody for joining us today and uh, for the presentation. We'll have the slides up usually within uh, 24 hours, and we'll also have the recording up on YouTube within 24 hours. Um, so thanks again, Chris, and thanks, uh, Leela. We appreciate your time and participation. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you.